Come on, let's have a good. Ghana. I love my country, man. I love my country so much. Welcome back to my new series where I showcase the very best of African restaurants in London. Today, we are in South East London, Old Kent Road, and I'm taking your taste buds to my homeland of Ghana. 1957 is a restaurant that serves traditional Ghanaian dishes so good it will have your taste buds thinking it's dirty December in your mouth. Stay tuned. I'm for Akwaba. I'm going home, I'm taking you home. We are going to get a taste of Ghanaian cuisine. Um, this place is called 1957, but here they serve traditional, authentic Ghanaian food. And I can't wait to take you home. Let's go. Nineteen fifty seven is a Ghanaian fusion restaurant infusing each dish with history, tradition, and modernity. Meet K. Jeffrey Boatin. He is the co founder of nineteen fifty seven. Boom, I'm Amfor Akwaba. We are in nineteen fifty seven. Man, I came here last time, I chopped well. I chopped yes, well, man. <laughs> He's like, yeah, he was up. like, yeah, this brother up. keeps eating, well, yeah, man. Come up, uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, come up, yeah, come up. Thank you very much for having us, man. Obviously, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm all about showcasing African restaurants in London and this gives me a taste of home and I, I want to show it to the viewers. So thank you so much. Um, talk to us about 1957. Why the name and the origins of yeah. 1957? So it's funny because that is like a conversation point for many people that come to the restaurant in mm. terms of what is 1957, mm. which I'm happy that we picked that name now. 1957 is when we gained independence as yeah. a country and it was quite important for us just as a nation to showcase or educate people yeah. in terms of understanding our history when we started. So right. 6th of March 1957 is when Ghana gained right. its independence. Yes, so we are here. We are right now. We are in 1957 and we've got the starters right in front of us. We've got Kelly Willie, which is like fried plantain, rubbed in spices, and um, it's topped top with peanuts, which will give it a different sort of added texture. And then we've got this chichinga, which is basically like lamb suya, rubbed in suya spices. Um, I'm gonna try some now, man. Why not, why not, why not, why not? I'm excited, man. Let's, let's hope that this takes me back to the streets of Dansoman. You know them ones there? Come on, let's have a good. Ghana. I love my country, man. I love my country so much, honestly. It's sweet and it's got like this little bit of a kick, but it's gingery sort of uh, spice. Uh, it's like that subtle undertone. It's, some people maybe are, maybe maybe can handle it. Some might not be able to handle it. But the peanut as well, topped off the peanut, just gives it a sort of crunch. It pairs up so well, so well, delicious. Right, we're gonna try some of the, the suya. meat is so tender and it's not chewy a couple of bites and it's gone and it's got like these like delicious sort of seasoning like topped off with this orangey seasoning which is basically the suya and it's so so good it just enhances the flavors of the meat oh. I'm ready for the main course man I'm ready for the main course when you thought about having a Ghanaian restaurant in London. What was the thought process behind it? I think mine was, I remember, so I've got, I own a travel group, um, which is responsible for growing tourism in Ghana called Ghana yeah. Escapes. Yeah, yeah. And so every Christmas we were taking tourists back. So mm. people from different nationalities, whether Ghanaians, Sierra Leones, you know, different nationalities were coming yeah. with us. And then whenever we used to come back, those who lived or resided in the UK, we always used to do a reunion. Nice. So we'll go to say a restaurant, yeah. Maybe have a table, and one of the years we had so many people that came to the reunion. We rented out the restaurant exclusively, mm -hmm. and then there was music playing. There was a DJ there, and it was almost like it, it was different. A different kind of experience to yeah. what a restaurant typical settings was. Yeah, yeah. And that's when I kind of made a mental note that one day I want to start open up a restaurant, and that Come was on. around 
2014. Fast forward to 2018, 2019, my business partner came up with a concept called Hip Life High Life Brunch, mm. which was basically a brunch which promoted hip life music and high life music, two mm. of Ghana's biggest music or sound out of the country. Mm. So it was a five hour dining experience which included bottomless drinks for two hours, two to three course meal, jollof right, rice, kelo right. wele and so forth, right, right. and an after party for about two hours as well. When we done that, that fast became one of the most popular African brunches here in the UK, attracting uh, anything between two to 400 people at a time. Mm. What had happened was we rented a venue for one of the brunches and then last minute they canceled on us mm. because they got a bigger offer from someone else who wanted to do an event there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I never wanted to find ourselves in that position again. My mm. business partner was fuming. So what we then said, that, that that's when we came to the realization that we need to own our own. Right, right. Fast forward later, lockdown, 1957, the restaurant was birthed. Sick, mm. wow, 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 what a story, man. See, the food has arrived. Uh, we've got wache, and wache is typically it's a northern region of Ghana sort of food, all right? Um, the rice is brown and it's cooked with beans. How they do it is that they add sogum leaves. Now, sogum leaves turns the rice brown and it's got medicinal properties. Um, so it's, it's said to lower blood pressure. That's what it's said. And then we've got the egg and the talia. The talia is basically spaghetti, like pasta spaghetti. And then we've got like stew, like meat stew here. And then we've got shito, which is like hot pepper and gari. So I know what you're thinking. How does this all come together? But it actually works. Trust me, it actually works. You just mix everything together and you munch. And that's, that's what it's about. And this is my favorite Ghanaian dish. When we talk about Ghanaian food, what should one expect? Because it's think in your face. <laughs> Ghanaian food, there's two sides. Yeah, so, of course, of course. For example, today being a Sunday, you obviously have seen different people having different menus mm. in terms of today is more like the traditional. Right. So you've got traditional, we call it the swallows, so food that you swallow, yeah. food that you have and you just sleep afterwards. Right. So that's dish such as fufu or mutu, which yeah. is served with peanut soup, right. tozafi, um, banku, tilapia, right. and things like that. That's right, more right, your Sunday right. traditional heavy food, because yeah, typically yeah. on a Sunday in Ghana, people like to go heavy mm. after church, eat a solid meal, etc. Mm, mm, mm. And then in the week, you've got, I call it your, your default kind of Ghanaian dishes, mm. which includes wache, what you love mm -hmm, here whenever mm -hmm. you come here. I love it. Jollof rice and grilled chicken, love things it. like that. I love it, I love it, man, I love it. So how, how have you, I mean, for avid Ghanaian, we know how to eat these, these, these dishes. Yeah. How have you made it more friendly for the general public in terms of like, the, the presentation and, and the education behind it because yeah. African food is, 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 is quite hard to navigate. Yeah. It's not like... I mean, we, ha we, it, haven't, we haven't made it, we haven't changed it in terms of how we make okay. it or something like that because I believe that it's almost like if I'm coming to your house, yeah. I don't expect you to do something that you don't do in your house of course, at the end of the day. And even though we attract many nationalities here, yeah. we still keep it fairly authentic, fairly authentic at the end of yeah. the day. Yeah, what yeah. we have focused on is presentation yeah. because I think it's important because we live in such a strong social media presence nowadays. Course, your course. presentation is what kind of gets you your next booking or gets people interested in coming from your food vloggers Absolutely. and so forth and things like that. Absolutely. So presentation in terms of some of the crockeries in which we use, mm. we probably took about six weeks of just studying different types of crockeries that can make mm. our food stand out, not just a white plate from Ikea, yeah, as yeah, an example. Yeah, 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 certain yeah. things was bought from back home, That's certain right. things was made in the Ashanti region, in Kumasi, right. etc., which was then sent over to us. But in a bit of a bit of a modern twist to it as right. well. Like for example, many people that come in, they love the, um, the mini asankas. When mm. you think about an asanka bowl, which our fathers, our forefathers had big fufu and yeah, meat and yeah, everything in yeah. it. We've got the mini ones and right. we'll serve jollof rice in that right. as an example, just to kind of stand out. Right, 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 right. Right, so we're gonna munch. Let's, let's, let's see if it will transport me back to the streets of Accra. Let's see. I feel like I'm back on the streets with the truck truck driving by and then watch a lady saying, watch you, watch you, watch you. Bruv, it is banging. The rice is very, it's got a bite to it and the beans, it's just, it's got a bite to it as well. The meat is soft, it's fresh. Mm. It's tender and the stew, the meat stew is actually quite sweet. And then we add the shit on and it just raises the heat. It gives it a little bit of a heat and a kick. And the talia, 
don't know what it does, but it does something. I'm sure it does. Honestly, it is delicious. Absolutely delicious. Mm. Just look at that. Look at that. Mm. Very bold, very rich. Lots of sauce, very hearty meal. And this is street food in Ghana. I love it. I absolutely love it. Cool, let's go to the jollof. This is basically the best jollof in Africa. Ghanaians, we make the best jollof in Africa. Oh man. Jollof is basically rice cooked in stew. And the reason why it's orange is that it's, the rice kind of takes the, the, the color from the tomato stew. It turns it orange and um, it's sweet. And it, it's, it's the stew just gives it that, that tomato sort of stew gives it that rich, sweet, sort of tangy flavor. It is delightful, delightful. Yeah. Like, what were some of the challenges that you faced in, in running a restaurant? 1957. How long have you got? <laughs> <laughs> no, I think um, we're not restaurateurs. Me and my business partner, we're both from promotional backgrounds. We started as promoters, like right. club nights and stuff like that. We know nothing about food. Don't ever put us in the kitchen. Right. We know nothing about food. So we was educating ourselves, but it was a good time to actually open a restaurant mm. because it was lockdown. We had nothing to do apart from educate ourselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, we had to get the team in place. So we had certain people who came in um, consultants that came and that consulted for us in terms of like, the infrastructure yeah. of the restaurant. Right. But I think it's your typical, I'd say, challenges that you get with opening up a restaurant. Mm. If those who have opened up a restaurant even worked in a restaurant before, mm. there's you've got the people side of the challenges, you've got the builder side of the challenges. Mm. It's always different things. Like a prime example is, you know, we're African, we're Ghanaian. Right. Yeah. You are used to your mum making you jollof rice in particular way. Of course. So naturally, when you go somewhere and you take someone else's jollof, it's not that it doesn't taste nice, it's only because you've got your preference. Right. At the end of the day. Right. So it's those type of, I wouldn't even call it challenges, it's, it's more of a preference. Preference, yeah, At the end yeah, of the day. Yeah, like yeah, me yeah. personally, I will never go out and order jollof rice. Right. Because I'm used to the way my wife and my mum cooks it. Right. At the end of the day. Right, so right, anywhere right. else, it tastes different and I may not enjoy it as much of at the end course, of the day. Of this is so good. So good. Your favourite is my chair, I can tell. Is it it's my favourite. Wacha is my all-time favourite meal. Mm. All-time. You liking the jollof, yeah? Let me try it with the egg as well. Oh my gosh. This just makes me want to go to Ghana. I just want to fly on that plane and go. That's how good the food is, man. I love it. Mm. You got to get the eggs in there, man. There's a thing with Ghanaians and eggs. I don't know what it is, but we like it. But I like the stew. It's just the stew. It's so, so good. Like, look at that. You've got to try it with the stew, man. You've got to try it with the stew. It's so sweet. Mm. Oh, man. You get chewy. I love it. I absolutely love it. That is so good, so good. How it comes together, I don't know, but it just works. <laughs> don't ask me questions, it just works. It's just, whoever invented it, whoever created it is an absolute genius and deserves a Nobel Peace Prize. Mm -hmm. It's so good. It's Gary, so Gary is basically granules of cassava. And it, it just, it's like, almost like couscous sort of texture and the size of, of it and um, it gives it a bit of that soury, sort of um, gritty, gritty sort of texture. It's, it's really cool, it's quite nice, man. It's traditional yeah. and I love the way you've presented it, yeah. but it's also unapologetic as well yeah. and bold flavours and that's why I like. What's next for 1957? What's, what's, what's next? What would you like to do next? Very good question. Um, I think me and my business partner, we ask ourselves that every single week on our conference calls. Nice. Um, and we wanted to take our time. You know, mm. I think sometimes when you've like, we've had, first I want to say that we've had such great support from the community in okay. terms of the Ghanaian community, okay. which is, it's quite flattering because 
you know how it goes like whenever you're opening up something sometimes you think your community is not going to support you mm. and you probably heard people saying that like Ghana Ford yet yeah, it don't support one another but yeah, yeah. I think everything that I've done to push Ghana forward whether that be from a tourism group whatever it is mm. I've had strong support from my community mm. um, and I remember when we first actually opened mm. we had so much opportunities that was kind of flying our way it was yeah. a bit like whoa, whoa we just put the brakes in it yeah. we were having people that I mean, I remember we put the logo out, say, in the June, three months before we had opened. Mm. We didn't say where it's going to be. We didn't say what it's going to look like. We just said Guardian Restaurant soon coming to London called 1957. Love that. We were having people DM us saying, oh, we'll love to invest. We'll love to do it. Like, you don't even know if it's going to be as small as a cafe or a table <laughs> yeah, or a dark yeah, yeah, kitchen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was, we then had calls from people in Milton Keynes saying, right. oh, can you open up there? Nice. Can you open up in Manchester? So nice. we were like... If we were just going left, right and centre, we probably would have felt flat on our face. Wicked. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. again, we were very, we faced the reality that we're not restaurateurs. So of there's going to be a lot of learning that needs to be done in the infancy stage. Mm. So we kind of need to take our time. Mm. So, but what we found from this, that there's so much that can come off as a spin-off of this. Mm. You understand? Like mm. downstairs, we've got the private room as an example, yeah. which is more drinks led, private parties and so forth. Nice. So that's a whole different aspect of hospitality yeah. that we've got of it. Right. Upstairs, you've got your stereotypical traditional format right. upstairs you know, we're promoters, so we're promotion background, we can go into so many different areas. So to say what is next, we haven't got a, you know, a plan of what is next. Right. We're kind of open. Right. Like we're having conversations right. with people in different areas and so forth. So who knows what can come as a spin-off? Man, I love that. Yeah. I love that. Honestly, thank you very much, man. Okay, mm. thank you very much for having us, man. And uh, yeah, man, I just hope that it keeps on thriving. Yeah, yeah challenge. Challenge. Even if you like, I always say this is helpful upwards. for all of us. Come yeah. On. Forward ever, backwards never. Come on. You already know come the saying. On. Come yeah? on. You know the saying, man. God bless you, man. Thank you, challenge, my brother. Come on. Thank you, love sir. You. Love you. Really good. And this is what Ghanaian food is about. It's really in your face. There's lots of flavours coming together. It's unapologetic. It's in your face. It's rich. It's bold. I'm missing Ghana, man. I'm missing Ghana.